Hey there, welcome to Reverse World Building, the show for people who wish mythology had just a little bit more science in it. My name is Moya McTeer, and I'm an astrophysicist and a folklorist who specializes in facts based fictional world building. Uh, in these videos, I start with the characteristics of a mythical creature or legendary figure, and I work backwards to figure out what type of planet they might have realistically evolved on. And in today's video, we're talking about the vampire. I feel like it might actually be impossible to be a person in this day and age with access to media and books and TV and all of those other things and not know what a vampire is. But what you might not know is that vampire-like creatures, these uh, creatures who maybe come out only at night or who are, get their, their sustenance, get their nutrients from, from sucking blood or eating people, those types of creatures are really common throughout the world. Uh, the vampire that you probably have in your head, which I'll talk about in a second, that's like the European version of the vampire. Uh, but you also have things like the Mananangal from the Philippines who can actually like detach the top part of its body from its legs and fly around looking for mostly men to kill because the one of the legends is that the Mananangal was a bride left at the altar. Uh, you have the Upir in Russia, you have the Asasa Bonsam in Ghana. Uh, the list goes on and on. Most, if not all, cultures from around the world have something similar to the vampire. But in today's videos, we're talking about the pretty stereotypical, the classic uh, Western or like the European vampire. Uh, the characteristics of a vampire are that it's pretty pale, uh, it can't eat garlic, it burns up in the sunlight, it can't see its own reflection in the mirror, it has to be invited into the house uh, depending on like what, what canon you use. There, are, Some of these are present and some of them aren't. Um, other things like the, the vampire can't touch holy water or a cross. Uh, so there's definitely some like Christian religion baked into that. Um, there are a lot of different characteristics that a vampire has, but in this video I'm going to be focusing on five of them. I'll focus on why can't the vampire eat garlic? Why can't the vampire see its reflection? Why can the vampire only come into your house if it's invited in? I'm also going to talk about why the vampire can't go into sunlight and why it drinks blood. Why can't the vampire eat garlic? There are some studies here on Earth that have to do with allergies that say if you're exposed to something, you're less likely to have an adverse uh, reaction to it. Uh, a lot of these studies have been done with common allergies like pets or dust or nuts. That's a pretty common allergy. And the studies say that if you expose a child to one of these things or all of these things when they're younger, if they have more exposure to the, like the molecules and compounds that are in those, that cause the reaction. Uh, also, if they have more exposure to things that can build up their immune system, then they're less likely to have allergies to those things in the future when they're older. And so I imagine that the planet the vampire is from just doesn't have a lot of garlic. Um, there are so many reasons why that might be the case. I can't think of any one major planetary characteristic that would make that so. Um, but I just, I just really wanted to talk about it. Also, let's all take a moment to feel really bad for the vampire because if they're allergic to garlic, then they're probably also allergic to plants that are in the same family as garlic. This family of plants is called Amaryllidaceae. I think, um, and it in, it includes onions, leeks, shallots, uh, all of the things that can give food a really deep, tasty, uh, savory, aromatic flavor. Uh, so if the vampire can't have any of that, let's just all take a moment to really reflect on how horrible vampire cuisine must be. Like that, that's just really unfortunate. I feel really bad for them. Speaking of reflecting on something, why can't the vampire see its reflection in the mirror? To understand this, you first have to know that there is an entire electromagnetic spectrum. Humans see in what we call the visual range. It's a very narrow part of this entire electromagnetic spectrum. You also have to understand that objects can be either transparent 
or opaque to different wavelengths of light. Something like glass is very transparent to visual light. That's why you can look out of a glass window and see what's on the other side. But that same material, glass, is opaque to wavelengths like ultraviolet light. Uh, that's why you can sit inside uh, next to a window on a very sunny day and not get a sunburn. It's because the harmful UV radiation isn't getting through the window. It's opaque. Uh, the light doesn't pass through. Mirrors act just like any other material. It's transparent to some wavelengths and opaque to others, and it will reflect some wavelengths and not reflect others. So the mirrors that we use reflect visual light. Uh, otherwise we wouldn't use it, right? Like it wouldn't be able to show us our reflection in the range of the electromagnetic spectrum that we use to see. Uh, but there are other wavelengths of light, longer wavelengths of light, like infrared and radio waves, that could pass right through a, a mirror that we use. I imagine that the vampire probably comes from a planet where it's evolved to see in a different wavelength of light, a longer wavelength of light, like the infrared. Uh, probably not the radio. If, if a creature could see in the radio, it would have to have giant eyes uh, to catch all of those wavelengths. Uh, so let's say that the vampire sees in the infrared. Uh, we here on Earth evolved to see in the visual range of the electromagnetic spectrum because that's where the peak of our sun's energy is. If we humans evolved on a different planet that orbited a different type of star, we would probably see in a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, so the types of stars that emit the most light at these longer wavelengths in the infrared are called M-type stars. And so I imagine that the vampire is probably from a planet that orbits an M-type star. These stars are much cooler and dimmer and smaller and less massive than our own sun, uh, ranging from about 10% the size of the sun to about 70% the size of the sun. While we're on the topic of suns, what's up with a vampire burning when it's exposed to sunlight? This really closely follows the last characteristic in that if a vampire from a planet orbiting an M-type star were suddenly exposed to the high amounts of energy and radiation from a star like our sun, then that would probably be too much for it. Um, I'm not saying that it would burn up into a crisp on the spot, but it would probably not uh, be very comfortable for a vampire used to a dim M-type star uh, to suddenly be exposed to the very bright, hot uh, type of energy that you get from a star like our sun. Uh, so this just reinforces the idea that the vampire planet probably orbits an M-type star. Now let's get to the really meaty bit, uh, pun intended, we're going to talk about why the vampire eats blood. Human blood, if not all blood on the planet, is made of water. Remember, we're about 75% water. Uh, it's also made of salt and proteins and some other things, and it has iron. I imagine that the vampire probably needs to have access to iron in its diet, but for some reason on its planet isn't getting that access. Uh, and when I think about both of those things existing in one space, that the vampire evolved to need iron, but for some reason doesn't have it right now, that led me to uh, one particular planet characteristic. Um, so the for much of this planet's history, there was iron available uh, either uh, in ore deposits in the soil that then was transferred. Um, either from iron ore deposits in the soil that was then transferred to plants as nutrients that like the vampires could eat, uh, or as like maybe the vampires just like straight up ate iron rocks. Who knows? Uh, but either way, the vampire was used to iron evolutionarily. And then something happens where iron wasn't as available anymore. Um, one annoying thing about iron is that it oxidizes really easily. Oxidation is a process where if something is exposed to uh, molecular oxygen, O2, uh, this chemical process happens where like the, the literal chemical uh, makeup of a substance changes. So instead of something being iron, it becomes iron oxide. Um, so I can imagine a world where there's such a high oxygen content in the atmosphere that over time, all of the iron on the planet gets oxidized and isn't available anymore to be consumed by the vampires. So I think that the vampire world probably has a high oxygen content in its atmosphere.
This last one, the idea of vampires needing to be invited into your house, I think is actually really fun because it's less about biology and more about culture. Um, I can't think of any natural, like biological, physical thing that would prevent someone from entering your home unless they were invited, but there are definitely cultural norms that can be really strongly held and believed. Uh, and so maybe the vampires just come from a world where the culture is one where it's super impolite to enter someone's home without permission. Uh, and that could be because personal space is valued really, really highly. Uh, and when I think about planet characteristics where personal space would be super important, I think of something where everything is really cramped and you don't have a lot of personal space to begin with. So you're just really protective of the personal space that you do have. To me, if I'm trying to think of a fundamental planet characteristic that would lead to that, I imagine that the planet is very small. If the planet is small, then the land masses are small, and there's just not much space for people to, to live in. And so they would be fighting for space and resources, and they would uh, highly value the space that they do have. And that would lead to a culture where if you're going to enter someone's personal space, you better have permission because it's the ultimate taboo uh, to just go into their personal bubble without asking first. This is my idea of a vampire planet. It's one where, for some reason, garlic doesn't exist, but that also means onions and leeks and all the other really delicious cooking ingredients don't exist, so let's feel bad for them. Uh, it's a planet that orbits an M-type star. Remember, those are much cooler and smaller and less massive and dimmer than our own sun. It's a planet that's much smaller than Earth. The smallest exoplanet that astronomers have confirmed is Kepler-37b. Uh, it's a planet that's about 35% the radius of Earth. Uh, and so if we have a planet that's that small, personal space is going to be very important and a vampire will need to be invited in just to follow cultural norms, not because something is physically blocking them from entering your space. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with another reverse world building video, but until then, take care.